Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to this edition of Pangea Talks. Joining us today is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of Alliance REIT, a private real estate investment trust based in Toronto, Canada. Mr. Human Tabesh joins us as a Chief Executive Officer of Alliance REIT. Welcome, Human, to Pangea Talks. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Oh, now I can hear you very well. Thanks very much, Human. I appreciate that. I wanted to introduce uh, Alliance REIT to our audience specifically for this reason. Uh, as Pangea, we, we pride ourselves in exploring opportunities for our clients that fit a very high standard of due diligence. And um, in working through the process with Alliance REIT, we found that there was an ideal match uh, between the values that you espouse as well as uh, the technical work that you're doing in this space, and of course, your team and the difference you're making in the lives of uh, Torontonians and Canadians made us look more closely at your offering. And I'm glad we did. And today in our conversation, Roman, what I'd like to do is share some of the success story with our listeners. What has happened is this. Uh, we realized that Alliance REIT, the Toronto-based Real Estate Investments Trust, even though you guys were established in 2016, you've done some tremendous things and collectively um, with your group of accredited investors, discerning um, real estate investors, uh, attentive property managers and professional real estate developers, you've been able to believe, to create what we believe um, is something unique in the private REIT space. From what I understand in knowing of you, um, you believe that renting should not mean sacrificing comfort luxury and service. You believe that uh, taking pride in providing a unique elevated place to live, but an experience for your residents that's accessible within the GTA. Human, with your 16 years of experience in developing and managing residential real estate, um, I'd like to learn a bit more from you and um, how your professional experience prepared you to deliver exceptional results at Alliance REIT. Thank you, Declan. Um, you're, you're too kind. Um, I started my professional life as a lawyer. Um, I practiced law um, at major law firm downtown, and my expertise was in asset management. Um, so in my career, I um, became counsel and eventually general counsel for some of the biggest asset managers um, in Canada. Um, from McKenzie Financial, FEMA Global Asset Management, and BlackRock. And what I learned was how important it is to pay attention to your stakeholders and make sure um, there's always clear communication um, with stakeholders. And I took that knowledge with me to Alliance Street. Um, from while I was on Bay Street, I also had my own side business of developing um, small rental apartments since 2004. Um, so really, this was a this was a ideal marriage um, for me to start Alliance Street. And as you put it, I believe that residents deserve elevated spaces in our city. What gives me passion is being able to offer beautiful apartments um, for people to enjoy. Um, and to take care of um, within the core at, at reasonable prices. Um, that's what we've offered. And thankfully, that strategy has been very successful. And we've been able to grow substantially since when we started while maintaining our performance of um, above 13% growth year over year. You know, Human, that's tremendous. And, uh, you know, us being in the ultra high net worth uh, wealth management space, uh, in rates of return, while they, they have a purpose and are appealing, um, we also look at management. We look at the values uh, alignment so that we are contributing capital into areas that we believe are making a difference. So I appreciate it. And I want to celebrate your successes on that uh, performance metric. What I also want to celebrate is the statement that I'm, the subtext really that I'm hearing from you is that you understand that home is where the heart is. And I, I wanna highlight that because you're not just looking at this like a, a billion dollar private equity fund, just looking at it 
a, just a mass produced cookie cutter uh, um, living spaces, you're actually taking your time to think about even the types of properties you choose and the neighborhoods you choose, which would appeal to specific types of clients. And I feel based on what I've learned of you in the time that we've known each other, that uh, it you're we're actually benefiting from you being a resident of Toronto rather than being somewhere in New York or Chicago and just deploying capital here. I think that deep personal connection and passion that you have for Toronto neighborhoods actually shows up in the ethos of Alliance REIT. Thank you. I do, I do have, I do have deep passion for Toronto and for in our neighborhood. I grew up in the West and, and I, I have love, if I could say, um, for turn of century brick and bean building. And to me, both from environmental ESG aspects of, you know, demolishing this beautiful double, often triple brick building um, that you, you can't rebuild anymore. And, and, and the lumber and the type of artisanship that's gone into them um, is a shame. So what we do, we elevate those buildings. We take buildings that, you know, um, are not at their best use, um, but that, they have the right put, put, the footprint um, the, at the right neighborhood. And we elevate them. We highlight those unique turn of century architectural features, you know, such as the thin slat flooring that you can't find anymore. Um, we, we, we treat those floors like furniture. Um, we, you know, we reveal the old beams and exposed bricks, et cetera. And we create places that I personally would be proud to live in. And what gives me the greatest passion, um, now that we're speaking about it, aside from the economic, is when we show these units at their finished state to prospective um, residents. And I see, and, and I hear the wows, and I see the eyes kind of go towards those features and them falling in love with it and really enjoying the space. That, that is my reward. Um, and uh, I, I look forward to those moments every time we finish a property. I have to express a word of gratitude and appreciation to you and your team, because part of the Pangea ethos is we value um, we value heritage uh, in what we do, and that you've taken that approach to. Um, meticulously selecting properties to do the work that you do in is meaningful to us. And that's why we were drawn to your values approach to your model. You mentioned the word love just moments ago. I, I, I must ask this of you. Uh, and generally when people talk about money and wealth, uh, you know, we approach it from a dispassionate point of view, but I think we, at this stage in my life, I mean, I'm, I'm 44 years old and uh, I've, I've grown a lot through my wealth management career and I see that there's actually value in talking about the passions of the leadership team and understanding what they love. And so I want to bridge that question uh, or that thought rather with this question, Human, what do you love most about your current role at Alliance REIT? I'm, I'm, let me say this, I'm privileged and lucky to love what I do. Um, I, I love all aspects of my work. I love aspects of my work because you know, we take, as you mentioned, this, I don't want to use the word heritage because that's a very specific definition, but essentially in, you know, in, in all other definitions, heritage buildings that are built in the turn of century, we south of St. Clair in Toronto, um, and bringing them back to life and really bringing back to the best use. You know, often these properties either get assembled and they get torn down. Um, we take this, these buildings and we bring them back to life. And then we offer them to, to, to folks who, you know, it, it haven't seen buildings or interiors like this other than maybe in brochures and movies, right? <laughs> often, often people in Toronto um, rent condominium, you know, uh, units in a condominium or units in an apartment building, right? But when we offer them units that look like something like a set of friends, let's say, um, and then I'm just, that's something that popped in my head, you know, where you have, you know, exposed bricks, exposed wooden, you know, flooring, wooden beams, you know, and everything updated, you know, it, it, it's, they, 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 they melt, um, you know, with passion. And, and, and that's, and that's what makes me love what I do so much. I love people. I love, um, love 
dealing and interacting with people and from interacting with our trades um, to our residents, um, to our neighbors. You know, these are things that I enjoy and I, and I you know, take the leadership role in you know, managing those relationships. Um, that's what I love the most. And, but if I were to really name one thing is taking those properties and bringing them back to their best use and then offering them to people who truly enjoy them. Thank you for sharing that. And as we, we spent some time on the right side of the brain in that previous conversation, I'd like to invite um, some left brain conversation as well. And I know you're formally trained uh, as, uh, as a lawyer, you hold an MBA as well as a JD. Why don't we explore some left brain conversation and talk a bit more about uh, strategy, talk a bit more about numbers. And to do that, I'd like to open this segment of our conversation with some information from the July 2021 rental market report from TREB. And specifically, what I'd like to lead with is a quote from Pre uh, TREB President Kevin Krieger. In that report, Mr. Krieger says, it is clear that the demand for rental accommodation has substantially increased compared to last year when there was a temporary pandemic related lull. Strong rental demand will continue into next year as immigration into the GTA picks up and we see a resurgence in the student population. With rental market conditions already tightening and demand set to increase, we expect future increases in average rents. This trend further reinforces TREB's continued call for government action to increase supply. I wondered if you could comment on how you see this particular statement impacting the Alliance REIT model in the coming two quarters, Human. Thank you. Um, let me step back and tell you how um, we were impacted over the past year. Um, over the past year, um, what was, um, we noticed that we, we occupy a privileged position within the Toronto real estate market. And when I say that is we had quite a number of um, dislocations. And by that, I mean um, uh, turnover, apartment turnovers. Um, there were a number of students who were going back to home. There were a number of young professionals who you know, were gonna go back to their cities of origin um, because they could work from there. They didn't have to stay in. However, what we found is that our units immediately got filled up. Um, as soon as we put them on the market. And they got filled up by folks who were trying to get out of more dense environments, whether it be that, you know, kind of sharing an apartment with somebody else or whether it was in a densely, you know, dense condominium building and dense apartments. Uh, we found that we didn't really experience any vacancies and our rents stayed the same. Um, what we're finding now, um, I would absolutely agree with that quote um, from Toronto Real Estate Board is that the, the students are coming back. We're getting a lot more inquiries about vacant units. Currently, we're fully occupied. We have three units that we're developing. They're going to be um, available and finished in October. Two of those units um, are already rented. Um, folks came in and they saw the unfinished apartments and they saw what we're offering from you know, renderings and they immediately paid top rent to rent them as of October 1st. Um, so that is great for our investors because what we've seen and what we are seeing is that our apartments are always going to be picked over the majority of other spaces that are available in our neighborhoods. Um, we don't charge the most rent, we charge market rent. And as a result, we're able to get the best residents. We always have multiple applications for our units and it enables us to then really pick the best residents that we believe are best for that space and the building, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the neighbors and the other tenants in the, in the building. Human, as you share this uh, perspective with us, the word that keeps emerging in the subtext of this conversation for me is lifestyle. There's something about what you're sharing with me in this uh, conversation that makes me feel the word lifestyle yeah. and I think to that point I know you've done some development uh, at one of your properties where there is a, a you know a restaurant involved and a, a rooftop patio if memory serves um, and I'm you know I'm a huge um, 
I'm a huge advocate of uh, the Toronto restaurant scene. I, I love the creativity and the, the 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 talent that we have here in the city and the restaurant scene. And you creating such a remarkable property to support not only your business but also other parts of the economic segment in Toronto as we look to to the communities opening back up maybe after September but um, we're definitely going to be reopening back up uh, and you're you're probably ahead of the game in that respect so that's something I wanted to acknowledge is that uh, there's a lot of innovation and forward thinking looking in your model which is something we found very appealing at Pangea uh, thank you for that uh, feedback and commentary. I wanted to shift the, the conversation a bit further into the analytics and the numbers, if you don't mind. That same uh, uh, Toronto Regional Real Estate um, uh, report uh, from the, the TREB uh, Real Estate Board, it said that the Q2 2021 average one-bedroom condominium apartment rent was down by approximately 9% year over year, but up by approximately 4% when compared to Q1 in 2021. The average two bedroom rent was down by approximately 5% year over year, but up by just over 5% when compared to Q1 in 2021. Now you've talked a little bit about this uh, in your previous uh, statement about not charging the highest rent, but you're charging market rent. I wanted to quote something from the chief market analyst, uh, John Mercer at TREB, he said, renters continue to benefit from lower average rents compared to last year, which was a contributing factor to increased rental transactions. But the situation is changing, he says. It is clear that rental market conditions are tightening and will continue to do so as the population growth resumes. So evidently, Treb's already forecasting and seeing what's happening you know, as this, this COVID environment that we're dealing with uh, starts to, uh, to melt in certain areas and it's not as rigid to, to deal with. And he says, uh, John Mercer says, this will result in declining vacancy rates and an acceleration in rent growth into 2022. Now, Human, I'm aware that the Treb statistics are indicative of the broad market in the GTA. As it relates to Alliance REIT, I'd like to explore that a bit further with you, where you provide us with some insight about the actual statistics you're seeing in your private rental portfolio. Of course. Um, so I'll build up on my previous answer. Um, we saw um, at the start of COVID, um, and this is really towards the, the third and the fourth quarter of 2020, um, that we were getting more turnovers. And although we were able to fill those units, um, we did notice a bit of a light um, from the core. Um, we never lowered our rents. Our rents currently are pre-pandemic levels. We didn't raise our rents, obviously, um, throughout the last year and a half. Um, but we are charging the same exact rent that we were charging in towards the end of 2019. Um, as what I'm seeing, and if you're asking my opinion based on what I'm seeing, I, I am seeing the tightening of the market. Um, there are certainly, I mean, mind you, um, September and October are always the busiest month in the rental market. And the students are coming back. Um, so what I'm curious to see is whether this trend will continue into Q1 2022 and after that, which I expect it will because of the increased Im immigration. Uh, but I absolutely concur with the overall GTA stats in that um, the rental market is certainly tightening. Um, we are seeing it within our own micro environments. Um, we are fully occupied and the number of inquiries um, is constantly increasing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, from your your materials that we've studied uh, here at Pangea, you've you've stated publicly that um, you provide direct investments in premium multifamily real estate. You recently acquired a uh, what we would describe as a historical slash heritage building in the GTA. I wondered if you were comfortable talking about that, the one uh, closer to Bathurst. Absolutely, on in Forest Hill, um, it's on Spadina. Um, our model, as you said, it very much caters to lifestyle. Um, we provide boutique elevated spaces um, and we often provide them in the context of a three to four unit building uh, is what I call low rise. 
Um, the building that you're referring to is, you know, it's a pre-war building built in the 1930s. It was built by the same architect that built all the Cineplex, Cineplex Odeon theaters in Toronto. This was the only apartment building that he was commissioned to build um, in Forest Hill Village. And it, it is a gorgeous building, gorgeous building. It, it, no other one like it would ever be built in Toronto. So when the opportunity for us came to buy it from the family who's held it for the past 80 years, it really was a no brainer because what it enabled us to do is to scale our model and be able to offer um, you know, our demographic um, the same elevated living space but within the context of a, what I call a mid-rise. It's a 32 unit building um, and the features, and currently we are in the process of renovating 12 of those um, units, um, which is great because it enables us to immediately get the return on our investment on those 12 units and more. So it fit the model, um, it's a boutique building. So that within that context, it, it made sense um, whether Alliance will purchase additional buildings only if it fits our, as you say, lifestyle model. Um, it is, and, and to kind of put it in the left brain context, you know, the same square footage building units in our buildings that provide that lifestyle, the elevated architectural space generally demands more rent than the similar space in a building next to it. Um, we're always, we always want to be the provider of choice. We want to be where young, upwardly mobile and professional folks want to live. Um, and that's the space we provide. And this building really represents that. And I very much look forward to finishing the, finishing the building and be able to kind of provide um, not only pictures, but also financial stats as to return on that, on that building. Indeed, and uh, we're anecdotally, looking... I, I would mention anecdotally why you know um, when we purchased the property, there were a lot of institutional investors, many of whom you know and have heard of, who were also chasing this building. The reason the owners chose us, and it just goes back to again the right brain conversation. The reason they chose us because they knew what our model was, what our strategy is, and what our values are. They wanted someone who take this building to the next level, as their you know parents and grandparents had. And they saw in us the next generation of owners who were able to kind of provide the same type of, you know, amenities and the same type of, you know, residents as they wanted to see versus, you know, the many other asset managers you could imagine were also um, bidding for this building. And one thing I could tell you is that after we, after people found out that we bought the building, we got a number of offers to be able to buy it from us immediately for at least half a million dollars more that we paid for it. So it kind of, Confirm to us that we made the right choice with the building. Indeed. And as you talk about uh, family and legacy and multi-generational, you're saying things that resonate deeply with us in the family office, the Pangea family office uh, side of the conversation. So, you know, when we were made aware of this uh, opportunity, we were thrilled to celebrate that acquisition with you. Now, Alliance builds unique living spaces and boutique properties and focuses on dynamic urban neighborhoods that attract discerning residents. Um, and, and by doing so, you've been able to provide superior returns compared to other major indices, uh, including even public REITs since your inception. I wondered, as a, as a leader in the wealth management space, I've been around for about 25 years or so, I wondered, in your chair as leader of Alliance REIT, what are, what are three headwinds that you see um, over the next uh, 12 months specifically as it relates to COVID-19 challenges you've seen impacting your model and how is management prepared to respond to those impacts? Thank you. Some of those headwinds we've already seen and we're dealing with, one of the things that affected us the most, frankly, is cost of um, material um, and, um, and um, scarcity of labor. Um, what we found in the past um, two quarters is that and, and it's subsiding to an extent is that cost of material substantially shot up. And as you can imagine, although we are a residential REIT and we are landlords, we are also, a, you know, to a large kind of development team. Um, we build properties, we often add stories to buildings, um, et cetera. 
And we found the cost of materials kind of shot up in the past two quarters. However, they are subsiding a little bit. There's also scarcity of labor. So those are two, uh, I would say, biggest headwinds that they've noticed. Obviously, there's more um, uh, what I call obvious things. But those obvious things, as I mentioned, hasn't affected us. Um, we found our units were um, fully occupied throughout. Our residents paid the rent on time. Um, we've never had any delinquency on rent. Um, part of that is because we, we do focus a lot on the type of residents that we choose because we don't charge the highest rent. We, we have our selection um, and you know most of our residents are gainfully employed and, and uh, what we call AAA residents. Um, but those two cost of material um, and scarcity of labor, and I would add to that since you asked for a third, I would add to that, um, unfortunately, and this is a this is a common knowledge, um, government red tape. Um, you know, to develop a, a triplex or a fourplex in the city of Toronto um, often takes longer than it should. Um, the technical versions, you know, whether availability of, availability of parking spaces, et cetera, that prevents one from offering um, those multi-units um, are, are many. Um, and the timeline to get by um, the bureaucratic hurdles um, is, is longer. Um, we've learned how, how to take the proper shortcuts, legal shortcuts, I mean, how we do our developments. And uh, we are lucky that we are able to typically turn a building, you know, from um, purchase to fully tenanted, you know, within the span of one year. Um, but that's, as you could appreciate, that's quite fast. Um, and we have to work really hard at it um, to be able to do that. And um, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I think that's going to get easier. I'm, I'm only seeing it getting a little harder. It's unfortunate, uh, that observation, because I think most folks in this uh, space uh, would agree with you. And and here we have advocates like the president of TREB, Kevin Krieger, saying, with mental rental market uh, conditions already tightening and demand set to increase, we expect future increases in average rents. He said this trend will further reinforce TREB's continued call for government action to increase supply. So I think uh, in in this quote, you see you have an advocate here for government to to perhaps address some of that red tape uh, in the near term, because uh, we're going to continue to grow and demand for these types of quality properties will continue to increase and demand a, a premium, I think, in the price point. You know, thank you for for sharing that, uh, Human. I really do appreciate that perspective. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to open the floor for any final thoughts or comments that you may have for our listeners before we look to close off the call. Um, rolling the microphone back to you, what are two or three things you would like to leave in the mind of uh, our Pangea listeners as they consider Alliance REIT uh, as an option for capital allocation? Well, thank you for your time, everyone. Um... We start, I started Alliance REIT really as a vehicle for me to be able to deploy my registered you know, capital and also those around me who knew what I was doing. Um, we started small and continued to grow organically um, because we wanted to make sure we tested this model. We wanted to test the strategy. We wanted to test the model. And I am ecstatic to um, say that it works. Um, we follow a very mat mathematical model. We don't go after property unless we are relatively certain to be able to get a 5% or about cap rate. Um, and we stick to those guidelines um, pretty rigidly. Um, we are in a privileged position today where we have the experience, we have the resources um, to be able to expand our model. And we have opportunities within the next a few quarters to deploy a substantial sum of capital to be able to um, purchase properties that are very, very well located, that are within our neighborhoods, um, and, and that we know how to develop. Um, as a result, I am in the market to raise capital. I would like to raise 
somewhere around five to seven million dollars to be able to seize these opportunities. Um, and to the extent that I can answer any questions um, that you may have, I'm always available. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I thank Declan profusely for putting this together um, for me to be able to address you today. You know, Oman, I wanted to say one of the most encouraging parts of our due diligence process is uh, when we learned that management and even members of your board have their own personal money in Alliance REIT. And that's one of our checkpoints in our risk management model is are the people who are promoting the solution so confident in what they're saying that they have their own personal money in it? So I wanted to applaud you for, uh, for, um, for you, know, you know, that old saying, putting your money where your mouth is. Absolutely. You literally are doing that. And I appreciate that very much about who you are. You know, uh, Alliance has a very clear purpose. You say that you believe that renting should not mean sacrificing on comfort, luxury, or service. You take genuine pride in not only providing a unique and elevated place to live, but an experience that's special of home to all of your residents. You know, you keep doing what's in the best interest of your residents, your investors, and communities, keeping them top of mind, and doing the highest quality work that is possible for all of your stakeholders. And that's at the heart of your purpose. We'd like to applaud you here at Pangea for your contribution uh, today and to the contribution to you that you're making within the GTA and for uh, our Pangea clients and other investors who are alongside you. Our team at Pangea wishes you continued success, Human, and all the best to you and Alliance REIT. Thanks very much for joining us today. <music>